Every so often I get a question about how photographers can make money from their photography. They don't necessarily want to go into the business, they just want maybe a little bit of a side hustle. And one of the things that's worked for me is actually selling art to corporate art buyers, people who buy art that go in office buildings, hotels, any commercial space really. And I've noticed something about what they're looking for, and I think this is something that a lot of photographers can do very easily. I'm going to show you a tool that helps you create some of what they're looking for. And why don't we go ahead and get started? Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how I've made some extra money selling art to corporate buyers. And quite honestly, I stumbled into this. What happened was I was doing what everybody else does, you know, as they're getting into photography as a hobby. This is years ago, and I just uploaded my photographs on Flickr. I uploaded them on 500px and several other sharing sites. One of the things I always made sure to do was to put in keyword tags to describe what the photos were about. Because I figured if people were searching for things, you can't search for a graphic like a photograph. You need to search on something with text. So you put in your title, your description, and some keywords that helps people find your photographs. I had a few things that people were looking for, and those were not the type of photos I'm going to show you now, but I'm going to explain the difference. When Corporate art buyers are looking for things. There are two major things that seem to come ahead. At least this is what I've discovered in my experience. One is they're looking for local art. So for example, I sold photographs that I'd taken in Washington, DC to people who had a connection to Washington, DC. I've sold to some people in the Senate. I've sold to some people who have businesses in the Washington, DC area, and they want local art about buildings in government that they want to use inside of their offices. So that was one way to do it. But more predominantly, I find that people are looking for abstract art. And there was one of the people I sold to for DC who told me she wanted more art, you know, from New York or Chicago, but she wanted abstract art. And I thought about this as I've gone through different hotels, different offices and different meeting areas. There's something you notice about the art. It fills up the wall. So it's not just blank, bare walls, but it doesn't demand your attention. Usually, it's not something that you would even recognize. It's there to be noticed and forgotten almost right away. And depending upon the building and the people who are there and the purpose of the building, the art varies. Sometimes it's very colorful. Sometimes it's kind of muted, but quite often it's abstract. And what I want to do is I want to show you what you can do with your photographs and a program called Topaz Studio 2. And I've got a discount code for you. I'll put that on the screen and also in the description below. So you can save, I think, 15%. But it's very simple to use. And all you really have to do is think about how you take your photographs to pick a specific isolated subject and then use some of the filters or some of the preset looks inside of Topaz Studio 2 to make abstract art. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I've got this vertical photo of Spaceship Earth in Epcot. Almost forgot where I took it. And then there's a couple of things. You can go over here to look at ad filters and you can see there's a number of things, particularly at the top, you can see the basic ones. You get this in almost every tool that you're working with. This is not really in my mind the reason why you would want to get Topaz Studio 2 if you already have Lightroom or Luminar AI or on one raw. Any of those things will also do this. So this is not what makes it stand out. What makes it stand out are these other tools, particularly the stylistic and the creative tools. But before we go and start working with those, I want to go over here to add look. And this is where they've taken some of those tools and created interesting looks that you can apply just at the click of a button. And suddenly you've transformed a rather boring photograph into something that is a bit more of an abstract art look. It's changed the color, it's changed the texture. The other thing I'm gonna recommend is if you print this on canvas and you print rather large, you can cover up a multitude of sins. It looks more artistic, and I'm gonna say that almost like air quotes, but basically it's giving you a look of something that was painted and it will fit very well into a lot of office or corporate environments. And there are a number of things in here. You can just go ahead and try some and get different looks. Now, as far as subject matter, I wouldn't necessarily go with something that's too terribly recognizable like Spaceship Earth. I wouldn't want Disney coming around saying, hey, that's ours and giving you hassles. But there are some of these filters down here 
that just really change it into something almost unrecognizable, but still having the appeal that a corporate art buyer might be looking for. Something that fills up a space, is interesting to look at, and yet not necessarily representative of a specific local item. And it really depends on what you want to do. If, you're, if you want to try and sell something to Disney, perhaps this is a look that might work. And perhaps it's not. It depends th what the specific look is that you're going for. Now, you can filter these down. So, for example, there are different categories here. And I kind of like to stick with the abstract or artistic look. So if I click on abstract, that gives me some of these that we've already looked at before. And a few more that perhaps we haven't. And there's one down here that I, that I really liked, and that was this one, the sketch outline. And when that one transforms over, it is very graphic. It is not something that you would immediately say, oh, that's Spaceship Earth. You'd say that's a graphic representation, and it's very stark. You can go over and find a number of different ones, but you can also do this with other looks. I'm going to switch over from abstract to artistic and see if we can't find something that we like there. One of the things that I like about working with some of these looks are the different ways that you can find something that works with your subject. They're not all going to work. Some of them, I think, just don't really work for a subject very well at all. Some of them do, some of them don't, but that's the nice thing is you don't have to stick with the looks. You can also go through and find something that you create by adding your own filters. Another thing to do is take a look at the mood that you want to set for your art as far as what we're looking at. Do you want something bright? Do you want something colorful, dramatic, or dreamy? I think you can have some fun with some of these things, and you can find things that just really take on a whole new characteristic of your subject. And you can see there's color overlays and, and other features that are going on in here. But this doesn't just work with the, uh, an object like Spaceship Earth. Let's take a look at what happens if I were to replace this with a portrait. Okay, so unlike the previous photograph, which is one that I took, this one is an Adobe stock photo. So this is not something that I would turn around and do something in a filter and then sell as my own work. Obviously, another photographer took this one. All right, so now that we have a portrait here, let's go over here and look at adding our own filters rather than adding a look. And I find that there are some of these that just do a very interesting job, such as abstraction and AI remix. So let's take a look on some of these. So for example, let's start off with this one called Impression. And you can see this is kind of going to give you some different strokes that are a little bit more painterly. And you can kind of change these up a little bit depending upon a different style of painting or impressionism. And suddenly it's not quite the same as just a portrait as you're seeing how these different strokes affect or appeal to your subject matter. And some you're going to like, some you're not going to like. But the idea is that you can use these in combination with other filters and start creating something completely different. You can change the brush size, the paint volume, the opacity, the stroke rotation. So for example, if we pull this one up, you can see how that dramatically changes what you see as far as the result of your images there. So your opacity is going to vary up and down. And you create something that's uniquely your own. Like most filters, you have a number of different types of layer styles that you can apply depending upon what works best for your subject. If you want to do something as simple as a color overlay, you can go ahead and select that. And then let's say we're going to make a color overlay. And then you've got your opacity, so you can slide this up quite a bit, make a different look, and then just bring it down to whatever works for your subject. And you could probably do this and mix with a few different color overlays and maybe do a, a panel, for example, like uh, three or four images of the same thing, just one with each with a different color overlay. And it just takes some color and a, a very standard image and makes it more interesting when you look at them in a grouping rather than just an individual photo. So let's close that. We'll get rid of this. Okay, let's go over here to add filter. There are a lot of filters in here, and there's really only one that's really the reason why I say that you can make money with this. When we start getting into the creative and to the stylistic tools, 
that's where I really start finding something interesting. So for example, let's take a look at this one called focal blur. You can see there's a little bit of a circle here and it just makes a nice way to concentrate on the sharpness of her eyes and kind of let everything else go. I mean, you can pull this up a little bit if you want to and, and get her hair in there. And it's, it's nice. It's not the only tool that has a blur tool like that. And since this is just a white background, it doesn't give you quite the same effect. You can see that her ears are out of focus and her, uh, the rest of her body below her chin is out of focus. But you can kind of do something interesting with that. You can also do this tilt and shift, which gives you a very different look. And you can change the size of the blur using these sliders, and you can change the amount of the blur. And what it does is probably better, I would say, for a travel scene or building or cars than it is for a person, but you get kind of some interesting looks. And, of course, you also have these options over here if you want to do different layer styles. But I'm going to take this focal blur off. The one that really I'm enjoying a lot is down here under Stylistic, and it's called AI Remix. And this is the one that is going to do, I think, the best job of taking a subject, you know, like this person or maybe like the Spaceship Earth at Epcot and giving you a very artistic look. And as you can see, there are a number of photos and drawings in here with different styles. They've trained the AI to work with this and try and help your subject out and get a very different look. And this is the kind of thing that it's just a portrait of a young woman might be applicable for some places, but someplace else, you need colors. You need something that you can look at but doesn't really pull you right in. And you notice that the different styles and tones just automatically apply. We can go and choose a different photo, this one called Abstract Swirl, and you get a very creepy-looking thing with those eyes. But also, it kind of brings out some fire. It brings out a really different look off of a subject. And all of this comes back to the AI that's been trained with these different photos and drawings and sketches that are in here to give you different looks on your subject. And this is a very avant-garde type of look that you have from your subject that you're not going to get out of camera. And you can change these around. So let's go back to the first one. And you can look at the style strength. So it defaults to low. You can change it to medium. And then you'll see that there's just a bit more of the texture there. And then you can go on to high, and it kind of enhances it just a bit more. Then further down, you have a lot of control. You can change the brightness, the contrast, saturation. And if you want to change the hue, you can see where we are. We can bring this over, and you get a very different look to your photograph. Just applying that first picture and moving the hue gave you a different look. We talked about before that you maybe you want to make a three panel or a quad panel of different looks for the same subject. This is a way that you can kind of get those different looks just by moving the hue. And of course, you can change the smoothness or the sharpness. So for example, the edges are um, a bit harsher here. If we bring the smoothness up and you look over here kind of on her face, you can see that it really kind of brings that smoothness out a little bit and takes away some of the sharpness. So you can do some very interesting things just with these tools. And it's really, I think, just a matter of kind of playing with it and seeing what you get. Now, if you ever want to reset, just double click the title and it'll go right back to where you started. So if there's anything that you've changed, we can reset all of that. And you come back to where you began. There are a number of different photographs over here and it just gives you a number of different looks. Some of them I like, some of them I don't. And this one, for example, the Corpse Bride, is not one that I'm really fond of. But you never know what the need is that you have for what you're going to sell. and Or what you're going to find out with some of these photographs and artworks that are in here. And you're kind of applying those styles to your photograph. You're not going to love every one of them. But you know what? Something you don't like for one photograph might work for another one. Now, another interesting thing that I found is that when you choose a tool and you want to see, is it used in a look, there's a way that you can find that out too. So if you come down here over to presets, click this little arrow, and then it will show you the presets where AI Remix was used. So oil, paint colors, paint splatter, 
all of those presets that were on the looks that we were talking about were over here. So you can uh, see where that tool has been used in other presets. And once I close that off, you notice we don't have this over here. Just click on whatever tool or filter you've done, you've chosen, and then it will go ahead and bring this back up. So I think these give you a lot of opportunity just to have different looks that are artistic. And as I said, you print these on a canvas and you've got a look that goes out for an abstract kind of art that most people aren't going to be providing. It gives you something that's a bit unique and of your own to sell. And because it all comes down to your photograph, this is a stock photograph. You can find your own subjects, whether it's a person, a place or a thing and put them out here and you can give them a lot of different looks. Of course, AI Remix is the one that I look at for getting this kind of abstract look, which I find funny because let me turn this off. There is a filter over here called Abstraction, and it gives you some different looks. You can kind of change some of the sliders to see what you find. I'm not really into the smudged look, but if you want to do that, you can create something here and then add to it with other filters around here. So let's say that we took, let's say that we added this with impression where you can change and use different types of strokes to add to your photograph and give it a bit of an impressionistic photograph look or painting look, I should say. And if you don't like any of the ones that you've gotten, not only can you change them, but also you've got an opacity slider, you can reduce them. Maybe they come on a little bit too strong. And for each of those tools, it's kind of like its own little layer. You can bring that down and come up with a look that you want. So that's a, kind of a quick look. I didn't go over every tool and, or every look, but I'm going to say that if you go over to Add Filter and you work with AI Remix, that's really going to give you that abstract look that I'm talking about. You can also add a digital frame if you want to. So we can come over here and find you know, different frames or looks for your uh, artwork. That's if you're going to print something that is just specifically going to have a frame in the print. If you did this with a canvas, I think that might work out very well. And of course, you've got different choices. So we can do a frame or you can do a mat. And you can see that there's some different choices down here, whether you want to do a texture or a color. And we click on color, you've got the wheel over here. So you can kind of choose what works best for your photograph or frame that you've chosen. I say okay with that. And then you can see how, man, that was a bad choice on my part, but <laughs> that's okay. It gives you the idea that you can change that inner matting for uh, your, your frame. So you've got a choice here for the frame. You've got a choice here for the mat. I'm going to go back over here and uh, bring this back to the center and say okay. Then I'm going to come over here to the frame and you can choose a number of different frames and styles and uh, go with whatever works best for your color. So you've got some natural frames, some uh, different strange looking things, but you've got a lot of choices with this. And of course you can change your shadows, the inner edge width and outer edge width. So you've got a lot of details you can work with. You can even change the light position on some of these. So for example, if you're looking at the shadows over here, you can see that the light position is coming from top left. Let's say that we change this over to top right. And then you see the shadow is now over here because the lighting source is coming in from that way. So there's a lot of flexibility here. If you're curious about how to work with this tool, you notice over here we've got options, obviously, where you can open and export. You can change your view. So if you want to have a single view, which is what we're working on now, we can do a split view. So you see our original photo and what you've worked on. And you can also do split horizontal, split vertical. You can do side by side and see what your results are. I tend to stay with single view. That's just for me. And then you can always click this original just to get back in case you've kind of forgotten where you started off. And you can change the size over here. One of the things that I like is this little save a look button. That way you create something that you like. You can save this to your looks. And you can also have for your filters, you can have your favorites. You can, it'll show your recents. And if you want to add a look, you can apply something that's over here, but you can save your own looks as well to 
create in there. So that way, if you've created a look for your photographs and you want to apply it maybe on some different subjects, you don't have to go and remember every step and every filter that you put in there. It just gives you a, a quick and easy way to build what you want to build. But the whole reason that I'm talking about using this tool is about selling for corporate art buyers, something that's either local, which you've got the tools in here that you can enhance a photograph for local interest, but more likely something that's abstract. And I tell you with the AI remix tool, and then also using some of the other tools to kind of put your own spin on it, I think you can come up with some very interesting stuff, some very colorful stuff, some very moody stuff. It depends on what you want to create and the needs of the person that you're going to be selling it to. As I said, if you want to be found, put your photos up that you've created on social media like Flickr, 500px. Maybe you create an Instagram profile just for the things that you've done here. It is a good way to get started. You'll be discovered that way. If you want to go out and start searching for art buyers, well, that's going to be another video we might get into. But as far as creating abstract art from your photography, Topaz Studio 2 is a wonderful tool. I don't know of anything else quite like it. And you can save 15%. Just use my coupon code. I'll put that up on the screen right here. And I'll also have it in the link down below. So yes, that is an affiliate code. I'll get a little bit of a commission. You'll save some money on it. And hopefully that's a good deal for everybody. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this was useful for you. Please, if you like this video, go ahead, click the like button. That lets YouTube know that if we're doing something right, that they'll share it with more people based upon the number of people that click the like button. So I really appreciate that. It helps the channel grow. And of course, come on over to my website, williambeam.com. I'll have a link to that in the description below. I've got some free eBooks that are available at williambeam.com slash courses. So I'll have links to all those things in the description. And I'll see you in the next video.